Hello and welcome to Crosstalk, where all things are considered. I'm Peter Lavelle. The year 2016 was tumultuous, even transformational. On this edition of Crosstalk, we discuss what made this year memorable and what to expect in the new year. To Crosstalk the year 2016, I'm joined by my guest here in Moscow, Dmitry Babich. He's a political analyst with Sputnik International. We also have Mark Sloboda. He's an international affairs and security analyst. And in London, we cross to Adam Gari. He is a writer for the Duran.com. All right, gentlemen, Crosstalk rules in effect. That means you can jump in anytime you want, and I always appreciate it. Adam, let me go to you first in London. This is a watershed year. I said transformational. Um, it seems to me, in a nutshell, if one can have one broad stroke, is that this is uh, the globalist agenda has been stopped in its tracks. Maybe I'm being optimistic here. But we do see the neoliberal order being challenged in a very serious way on many different fronts. So having said that, what's your single biggest event that you think was important this year? The single most important event is a military event, but one that's very much related to the way that this globalist interventionist, do as I say, forget what I do, um, whole scenario, whole agenda has totally failed. I'm speaking, of course, of the victory in the Battle of Aleppo, okay. which is a watershed moment, not just because it turns the tide politically of what NATO and the neoliberal countries have been trying to do to the Middle East, to destroy it, to change secular regimes, which look after their own people, into a weird, ghoulish combination of yep. internationalist liberal ambitions with Islamists actually taking over on the ground. It's more significant even than the Russian victory in the North Caucasus, in the early 2000s or then Sri Lanka's victory over the Tamil Tigers because it's been so totally internationalized. It's like a proxy world war. You've got all of the major powers on different sides and guess what? Bad news for the neoliberals. It's the Syrian government with the strong allies in Russia and Iran who are on the victorious side in Aleppo and I believe quite early in 2017 that will be carried through to the other okay. regions of so Syria you, you, that are still being you've, occupied. You've mentioned uh, Aleppo. That would have been in my top three here. Mm -hmm. Dima, the other two, of course, are Brexit and Trump. Which, your, and Trump. which pick one? Go ahead. I think uh, we can summarize it as an electoral rebellion yeah. of the people in the West yeah. against yeah. the neoliberal trends. And it's not just uh, Trump and, uh, and Brexit. These are just the most spectacular events that happened in the Anglo-Saxon world. Don't forget the Dutch referendum in April. Uh, it was formally just on Ukraine's association with the EU, but in fact it was a vote of no confidence for the EU's yeah. foreign policy. And, and, and typical for the EU is that even though there is a referendum, they reserve the right to uh, recognize a referendum. We got the same kind of nonsense out of Brexit here. You know, Mark, you know, for me, other than the three events I just mentioned, it is the, um, the loss of confidence that the mainstream media has experienced because of these events right now. We have Aleppo, they have a parallel universe on that. Uh, they were all against, almost without exception, against Trump, but he won. And the misunderstanding, miscalculation of Brexit here. And the media is at fault at every single step, and they have not even come to terms with it. Yeah, you call this a paradigm shift year. Maybe. 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 It has the potential to be. We could very well look back next year and say everything could have changed, but it didn't. So we have the potential for a lot of change. You talked about a defeat of globalism. All right, I would prefer to talk about it as liberal hegemony, both domestically in the West, uh, in, in Brexit, uh, in, with Trump's victory in France, with the victory of Fallon in the primary, Bulgaria, Moldova, mm -hmm. um, the five-star movement in Italy. And, and amazingly, all of these things are now attributed to what was supposed to be an isolated Russia, <laughs> economically <laughs> devastated. Nigeria with <laughs> snow, China's gas station, a backward country that, according to Obama, produces nothing, is somehow now pulling the strings uh, all around the world. Evidently, even the Cubs' victory over the New York Yankees is due to Putin. Because, because he, he put his, his thumb, thumb on yes, the scale. Exactly. Adam, let me, let me go back to you, because Mark is, is exactly right here. In a, in a way, it was the year of Putin. I mean, uh, whatever happened in the world, somehow, some way, and it, of course, if it was negative, 
They could all tie it to the Russian president. I mean, uh, again, um, th this, I think this shows the weakness of the neoliberal order. I mean, they don't have any answers for anything, and they certainly can't take responsibility for what they do, so they blame someone else. Adam. Yeah, they certainly can't. Um, they're saying that Putin came to the world. In actuality, it was the year that the world came to Putin. People realized they suddenly woke up to the fact that the pragmatic, anti-ideological policies that Russia has pursued, where you ask questions first and shoot hopefully not at all, if you can help it, is actually a much more sane and sensible way to conduct world affairs than the, oh, someone stepped on my toe, time to invade a country under false pretenses, and if something goes wrong conveniently, blame it on Vladimir Putin, who's both an IT expert, an arms <laughs> dealer, an expert of the internal affairs of the Democratic Party. I mean, I know he's a smart guy. He's very intelligent, but I never knew he was this intelligent since I started watching the Comic News a, Network, a formerly known as man. CNN. A new renaissance man. Do you be, but in, at the same time, and on a serious note here, is, is we have the very last days of this year. U.S.-Russia relations are at their lowest uh, in my lifetime. Um, it, the, the, and, 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 and Obama has really... Um, um, made it an issue here um, uh, because maybe he doesn't have a legacy. I mean, from what I understand, within a few months, his entire legacy may be just completely wiped off, okay, uh, oh. because of all of his executive orders. Again, democracy de deficit. It's, uh, it's awful, but uh, Obama had a chance not to become the worst uh, president in the history of the United States. He squandered it in the last days uh, of the year 2016, you know. His decisions to freeze the drilling of uh, new oil wells in the United States, his attempts to set the United States on a collision for, uh, course with Russia in every possible oh, uh, yeah. point, you know, in Eastern Europe, in Syria, his attempts to make it very difficult for Trump uh, to, to improve Sabotage. the situation. Sabotaging, Sabotaging him exactly. before he even sits in the office. And that's here. the first time in history that there is absolutely no continuity between right. the two administrations. The outgoing administration is doing everything possible to make it difficult for the next administration to Mark, achieve its goals. Have you ever seen anything like this, Mark? Because oh, we thought this was going to happen when Obama took office. <laughs> and actually, Obama <laughs> continued Bush's you Bush, know, yeah. regime change policies in the Middle East and his war on terror morphed it from re uh, rendition and torture to drone assassination, but essentially the same thing. He actually thing. killed more people right. with drones. O than Obama <laughs> came to power eight years ago with the hopes of a country and the world, immediately given the Nobel Peace Prize right. just for He was welcomed existing. in Europe as a rock star. star. But we see him leaving with a, a complete oh. failure uh, domestically and foreign policy-wise. He leaves with a whimper, not a bang. Uh, just um, uh, uh, in the last uh, few hours, he is uh, reported as saying that he needs to have a quiet moment to assess what happened in 2016 and essentially where it all went wrong. Um, he, he leaves with these lame duck Parthian shots, new sanctions on Russia, flooding Syria with man pads, um, this last minute gesture on uh, not vetoing uh, a, a much deserved, long waited UN Security no, Council is, resolution on uh, Israeli mm -hmm. settlements in, in Palestine is not going to change anything because, of course, Trump is going to reverse this immediately. He's got a very pro Israel cabinet. So, and with this Arctic thing, these are, are Parthian shots. He's trying to Scrap together a legacy last minute. No one's buying it. He leaves with a whimper, not a bang. You know, Adam, it's really interesting to me is that, again, kind of, if I can just I say with this media meme, is that as Obama leaves office, he's popular with the establishment. He's popular with the mainstream media. But it, the establishment and the mainstream media are not held in high regard by voters all across the Western world. Again, we this parallel universe situation exists now. And, and